special is life? How special are the molecules that make up life? These are questions we have asked countless times across centuries. Since the last common ancestor, life has been encoded in a language of four letters, A, T, G, and C. These letters form the basis of inheritance, a mechanism perfected over eons of evolution. To make synthetic nucleotides was seemingly impossible, until it wasn't. Scientists have created the very first organisms functioning with the six-letter genetic code. How did we reach here? The first task at hand was to find among thousands analogs that could pair perfectly with each other. This stage alone took nearly 13 years. Thus emerged the stars of the show, D56 and DNAM. Improved versions use DTPT3 for wider compatibility. Instead of using hydrogen bonds, the two attract each other by the hydrophobic force. Like oil repels water, they avoid pairing to the natural water-loving nucleotides. This allowed them to be flexible and fit the DNA polymerases during replication, even if they looked like a mispair naturally. Basically, these nucleotides cleaned up well for an event. The first experiments were done in E. coli, a prokaryotic bacterium that lives happily in our guts. Once the plasmid DNA containing our synthetic base pair was introduced, all we needed to do was to sustain them. In certain algae, chloroplasts import nucleotides through NTT proteins instead of making them. By engineering this into our cell, our synthetic phosphates are smuggled in from the media. Hence came to be our first semi-synthetic, replicating, living organisms. Present experiments even show amazing results on eukaryotic cells, even human cells. But what are the implications? I see this as a revolution. Protein therapeutics like insulin and Herceptin have saved countless lives, but natural amino acids have quite similar properties, reducing diversity for therapeutic purposes. But now, with semi-synthetic organism, the sky is the limit. We can create proteins that are extremely diverse, we can revolutionize medical therapies, as in the case of interleukin-2, a protein redesigned for effectively treating melanomas. But that's not all. We can encode cells to do things and produce proteins they could never naturally. We could create cells that could clear up accumulated plastic waste or oil spills in oceans. However, the synthetic media is essential for their survival. Without it, they can sustain their populations for some generations and then fade away, preventing a Jurassic Park-like situation. Semi-synthetic organisms raise fundamental questions on the nature of life, the ethics of the future, and the science of today. They are indeed a revolution. So now, I ask you, how special is life? Its prerequisites are proof of naught. But this chance at existence allows us to see how beautiful it is, even when it's synthetic.